Even when he was setting a record for complete games at Portland State University, he was no Major League sure shot. After three years in the pros, he was a AAA All-Star within one save of a league record when the Indians called him up. After two years on the Majors Minors Shuttle, Olin arrived with four straight saves in the span of one week in July of 1991. In 1992, Steve Olin was in the top 10 in the American League in four relief pitching categories, including relief wins and save success percentage. But it didn't go to his head. Olin still hung out with his buddies in the offseason and trained with his former college team until it was time to head for Florida. I gave a big hug before he left. <laughs> And I was afraid that I embarrassed him, but I'm glad I did. I'm sorry. Steve Olin was 27. He is survived by his wife, a daughter who turned three last Sunday, and infant twins. Tim Cruz grew up in Tampa. Only last Friday night, his high school retired his number. Cruz's boyhood friends say there was a question about his ability to succeed at every level, but that his feel for pitching and his competitiveness got him through. Cruz was a serviceable middleman. It took him eight pro seasons to get to the majors for good. His best year came in 1990 with the Dodgers. In 66 appearances, he had a 2.77 ERA. The Indians signed him as a free agent two months ago. Cruz leaves a wife and three children. He was 31. As Steve Cyphers mentioned earlier, the Cleveland players and their families, there will be a memorial service for them tomorrow night. The service will be led by former Indian first baseman Andre Thornton, who is an ordained minister. The major story starting with case closed in Florida. Last Monday, the baseball world was stopped cold when we learned of the boating accident that killed Steve Olin and took the life of Indians teammate Tim Cruz by the following morning. It has been a week filled with trauma, grief, and wrenching emotions for that team, with the funerals this past weekend in Florida and Oregon. This afternoon in Orlando, the Florida Freshwater Fish and Game Commission completed its investigation into the accident and released its findings, including the condition of Tim Cruz, who was at the wheel of his boat. Further tests indicated that Mr. Cruz had a blood alcohol content of 0.14% at the time of the crash. Under Florida law, uh, a boat operator is legally intoxicated when his blood alcohol content reaches 0.10% or greater. The commission found that the blood alcohol levels in Steve Olin's and Bob Ojeda's blood was negligible. Ojeda told the commission that the three men were on Little Lake Nelly for approximately 15 minutes and were returning to Cruz's house to pick up additional passengers. Although Cruz was found to be driving his 18-foot Skeeter bass boat in excess of 25 miles per hour, the exact speed of the boat was not able to be determined. The reason for the accident, however, was made clear by commission officials. Careless operation, uh, maintaining a vessel within the uh, uh, speeds consistent with safety, and uh, a designated lookout, someone who uh, can be utilized to help uh, look for structures such as this. A telltale sign was that Steve Owen was at .02, and obviously his death was the same as Timmy's, so um, he didn't see anything coming. A tragedy like this is so sad, you hate to say that there's something good. If anything good, hopefully, hopefully the awareness will improve uh, boating safety in the state of Florida. Everything that happened happened so quick, and nobody still can believe what happened. And and those two guys are dead, and, and there's nothing we can do. We can bring it back, and, and uh, we got to continue playing ball. If they were here, they would have told us to play ball and forget about that. When the Indians open the regular season at home against the Yankees Monday afternoon, a sellout crowd is expected, and a special tribute is planned, including Patty Olin and Lori Cruz presented with the jerseys of their late husbands.